Are we going? All right, we're going. Um, so I'm joined here by Bob McDill, Nikki Lee, and Alan Reynolds. And uh, I'm Eric Olson. Uh, we're here to pay tribute to as uh, Dickie, I think you coined the phrase. Pal, is that correct? You coined the phrase? Well, one of us did. <laughs> I can't remember which one. <laughs> to pay tribute to our pal, Jim Casey. Um, thank you guys for joining me tonight. Sure. It means a lot. Um, I wanted to give this gift um, to Daisy and Jesse and Matt to hear uh, what their dad's friends remember about him. Just uh, tell some stories uh, from the old days. Um, <clears throat> so just for a little bit of context, you guys are all in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Uh, Bob this year, October, going to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Um, so meeting Jim, Dickie, you're the first to meet Jim. Yeah. I, I was doing a tour up in the Midwest, and uh, they were they backed me up. It's the uh, the band was Little Joe and the Ramrods at the time. I think the band was. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> I flew in, met them, you know, and just you know we spent a couple of days rehearsing and uh, really enjoyed it. I remember it was freezing cold the uh, first time I went up there. <laughs> But uh, we had we had some good rehearsals, and these they were they were just guys I really liked right off the bat, you know, you know, especially Casey, you know, he was just funny and uh, light, and uh, <clears throat> we had made rehearsing fun, and we did a lot of shows up there, and uh, I eventually, I don't know if it was on that, I'm not sure it was on that first tour or not. I did a lot of things with him, but. Uh, I thought I thought I'd like to get them down to Memphis to record, you know, and get with. I should have had Bobby Wood over here tonight. I didn't, I didn't even think about getting yeah. Bobby over here, but <coughs> anyway, uh, talked to Alan and Knox Phillips at Sun Records about it, and uh, we eventually we got him down there and recorded. And actually, Alan was responsible for the Spoke Ring name. He, oh, is that right? He changed yeah, Little Joe and the Ramrods. <laughs> The spoke ring, <laughs> which was a thought a pretty good move, <laughs> but you know that's how we met. That's how we, you know, I got him down in Memphis, and then they met McDill down there, and uh, we just all kind of hit it off, especially with Casey. You know, we just got to really be buddies with Casey. Yeah. Bob Hupp, he yeah. was really funny. Yeah, uh, yeah Hupp, Hupp is still is still really yeah. funny. And then you know Garth Fundus yeah. was in the group, and so. Lots, a lot's come out of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I I wasn't aware of you know all that history um, that was related to that. All the people who sort of branched off into having, not necessarily being artists themselves, but gone on to you know whether it's being a, an artist or songwriter or working in uh, management and <clears throat> all kinds of things. That's that Jim kind of opened my eyes to all that yeah <clears throat> I don't think I don't think a lot of people around uh, Northeast Nebraska know that much about it I know you know there's a lot of people who they talk about like, oh you know we grew up in a great time of there were so many places to play music yeah you know like when <clears throat> Jim talked about that a lot you know we had just so many different you know, places where you it was just, it was encouraged. I mean, like when I was growing up, you didn't, you didn't have a, a scene like that. But yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I never heard of Norfolk, Nebraska until I got booked up there. And I, and I think today, like, you know, who do you know from Norfolk, Nebraska? Jim Casey and Johnny Jim Carson. Carson. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I would say, yeah, the, the, two, the two JCs uh, from, from Norfolk. That's know? right. <laughs> Uh, so, Alan, first first impression, Casey. Uh, you know, Dickie had uh, had such a good time with the guys up there. I wanted to get them down to Memphis, and and uh, 
we, so when we did, uh, the, the whole band was a lot of fun. We had to spend some time trying to figure out what to record and what, what we were going to do together. And um, Casey and Bob Hupp would do these spontaneous skits. Um, and, you know, one of them would say, take the part of a, a musician and the other would take the part of a, a music store operator and they would start talking about an imaginary amplifier and, uh, and have us all rolling on the floor laughing. And, um, and uh, so it was just, uh, that was how I met him. And Casey was always lighthearted and fun. And, um, and every time they came to town, we, we looked forward to it and we knew we were gonna laugh a lot. Yeah. Because those guys, uh, that was how they rolled. <laughs> One of Casey's best skits was, was he did this along. Was it this along? Was the little man? He uh, go to the bathroom and paint. If it was at a party or any place where we gathering people, go in the bathroom and, and paint a uh, little eyes and a nose on his chin, <laughs> and then he would come back in with the crowd. He put a napkin over his nose and lie down upside down on a footstool, and then he would answer questions from the crowd as the little man. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious, just hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where he comes up with these things. <laughs> Do you remember your first time meeting Casey? No, I don't. I'm sure it was a nephew, but Casey. Uh, after we all moved to Nashville, <clears throat> Casey came up and. and uh, crashed in my apartment for six months or something. And then we <laughs> ended up together at the little house as roomies. We'd save up our money and go get a two end cut pork chops and a package of frozen Brussels sprouts and have a feast. <laughs> <laughs> Alan and I had a publishing company. I know we we paid them the right we paid them twenty five dollars a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had free rent so <laughs> Um, now, Smoke Ring recorded one of your songs, Bob. They did High in a Rainbow. You remember that one? I do, yes. Uh -huh. Was that, uh, had you already met <clears throat> Casey and the boys at that point? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. They did that at, uh, when they did the Search Rod album. Well, Alan was producing uh, at uh, Sound Emporium. Okay, here now. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> when you guys first met him, you're in Memphis. Now, mm -hmm. you come to Nashville. Sort of tell me what's, what's the sort of inspiration to the moving from Memphis to Nashville. You get the, the, the blues and R&B and stuff coming, rock and roll coming out of Memphis, and then Nashville tr tr traditionally had been you know, more of a country town, right? So what's, what's mm -hmm. the inspiration? Well, it, Nashville uh, had spilled over into the pop charts a lot, though, and uh, uh, at the time we moved here, it felt to me like it was going to change, like it was not uh, that country was going to start being something different, country music, and and get bigger, and a lot of things were going on in the town that were not traditional country and um, a lot of the musicians who were here because uh, one of the first groups, I, uh, Dickie and I wrote for Screen Gems for a while when we lived in Memphis and we would come up here and do demo sessions and and the, one of the bands that, that we worked with in the studio had been in Muscle Shoals and they had all moved up here. And um, it, that was Putnam, David, <coughs> David Briggs, Norbert Putnam. David Briggs, Norbert Putnam, uh, Jerry Kerrigan, Chip Young, <coughs> and um, I guess Matt Gaden was here already. But uh, anyway, that, uh, that was kind of typical of something that was an energy that was going on in Nashville and people were migrating here. Those guys weren't country. They were familiar with country and they, <clears throat> like me, they grew up 
uh, knowing, knowing about country and knowing a lot of country, uh, but they weren't country. And uh, but they moved here and, and made a a real impact on the on the town and the music of the town. And uh, it just felt to me like the town was about to flower and uh, in a new way, and um, and it did. Mm. You know. You guys want to expound on that or <clears throat> Alan wrap it up pretty good for you? Those days, uh, in those days, it was a very different uh, vibe in Nashville. Jim and I, Mr. Jim Casey story, uh, a friend of his, Dr. John Harris, was playing on a date over at Quad. And so he invited us, to, and we just walked in the front door at Quad, and there was Neil Young just finishing up Heart of Gold. And it was uh, Kenny Buttery and David Briggs and, and uh, et cetera. So all, some of those pictures from, the, from Muscle Shoals and all over. And uh, it was just a phenomenal time back in those days. It was a, music Row was a wonderful place. It was, it was, a, it was a big cult, a club. Yeah. Everybody knew everybody and you walk in and out of the studio. And, as Jim, that's could. what Jim found when he moved. When he moved when he yeah. came. I think everybody could. was kind of for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just uh, it was just uh, like like Bob says, like a big community, a big club. Everybody, so and so got a hit. You're glad he got a hit. You know, yeah. it just uh, it, was it, it wasn't it was a magic so time. much competitive. It's like you're all looking. It's like you know. More of a brotherhood kind of a thing, where it's like you, you cared about your people. You knew, like, it wasn't like they're doing something to you by having a hit song. It's like, no, that's a great mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it was a cool time. Um, I remember. I mean, I had been uh, working a day gig and writing songs and at night, and uh, and I. Re I remember uh, reaching a point in Memphis where I just thought it wasn't going to change. It was a sweet music town, but I just thought it was kind of stuck. And, uh, and I came up here to visit Jack Clement on a weekend and uh, went to a couple of parties with him where there were songwriters. And their attitude was like, uh, you gotta come up here, man. It's a great town for songwriters, and it was like a real welcoming kind of vibe up here, and uh, and it felt good in contrast to the way things were in Memphis, where at that time there were there was Stax Records and there was American Studios, and <clears throat> and, and uh, they were like there were like little scenes of activity, but they were like real uh, tribal and, and yeah, they're always competing against each other. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <coughs> whereas up in up in, in Nashville it was more like, you know, let, let's all do good. Let's all have join, fun. join the club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned the the Neil Young session, Bob. Uh, Jim told me a story one time about that going out. He finished Heart of Gold and he said he I think he'd come back into the control room and he, he just said Breadsville. <laughs> I remember him saying, sounds like bread. Yeah. 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 He knew it was a hit record, I suppose, and had a good ear on it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he kind of led me into this uh, Cowboy Jack. What does what Cowboy <coughs> Jack mean to you guys? That's um, valid. <clears throat> that's a. <laughs> Where do we begin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a large subject. <laughs> yeah. We met Cowboy at Sun Records, where he was uh, uh, producer, engineer, songwriter, and uh, Dickie and, and Jack and I just got to be pals. And uh, Dickie re was recording for Sun Records, and I was singing in the band. And then uh, at some point, Jack left Sun and soon built a, another little studio called Echo Studios. Uh, and and so we got to hanging out there with Jack, and and he was always uh, funny too, and uh, 
and we would make funny tapes like uh, spoofing uh, these 50,000 watt radio programs like Wayne Rainey was it? Yeah, or Wayne Rainey. It was WCKY mm -hmm. in Cincinnati and we would <laughs> make up a whole program with phony sponsors and all that stuff in the studio and record it. And, uh, <laughs> He was uh, he was one of a kind too. <laughs> Jack was. That's that's another one of those things that uh, Jim hit me to was Cowboy Jack. Yeah. You know, pretty early on when we yeah. got to be friends and talking music, and he's like, you know, let me tell you yeah. about you know one of my mentors. And, yeah. And uh, have you guys seen? You probably have the uh, Cowboy Jack's home movie DVD. Oh yeah. It's like, it's called uh, Shakespeare was a big George yeah. Jones fan. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, living with Jim, Saturn Apartments, and the Little House, was, he, he told me there were, there were some lean times. <laughs> yes, right, right. We got that, that 25 bucks a week didn't go that far. <laughs> I think we both thought that getting a job would be an admission of failure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember him saying when you guys lived at Saturn Apartments, he said uh, the best looking girl in the whole place was a welder. Was, <laughs> was, was that just a, a Casey tall tale or was no, that true? that was true. <laughs> well, I, I had to differ about how good looking she was. <laughs> but Jeff, you, you got to tell the Peeping Tom story oh, when young Casey was Yeah, there. Casey and I lived in a little house and one night we, we got a a knock on the back door, and, I, and uh, so I went. We were watching TV or something. I went to the back door, and there were a couple of policemen there, in uniforms, uniform. And one of them said, uh, "You live here, Marshall?" "Yes, sir, I do. Come with me." So he didn't. <laughs> he didn't nab Jim. He took me. <clears throat> so we walked up the alleyway there, and to the front of the little, front of the little house, and he said. Lean down and look into that, that glass on that door, which so I'll lean down like that. And there was an old lady in there, and uh, an old lady in there in a chair with a little thing over her knee, and she said, That's him! That's him! That's the one! I know him anywhere! Oh my God, what am I into now? So, uh, she said, uh, so I said, Oh boy, what's this guy? So the fellow said, oh, come with us. You know, so we walked back toward the house. He said, don't worry about it, son. You're the, you're the fourth one she fingered this <laughs> <laughs> He was just going through the motions to satisfy her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> so now you guys moved into the little house, which was, that was another Clement recording studio. No, was that behind Jack's tracks? It was behind the Jack Plummer recording studio. Is that like on Belmont? On Belmont. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It was a crash pad for itinerant musicians and songwriters who ever wanted to flop over the clock. 